if you hear that the feds are asking questions, call your attorney and get right to it because I thought it was all a big mistake. It was nothing, but it's not because the Department of Justice at that point has has their case. And right now they're just kind of pulling together the strings, if you will, but they already have a case against you. So, you know, you need to decide you need your attorney. You need to then make sure that your attorney has a white collar practice, practices federal criminal defense. I've had, I've, I've spoken to clients that have had attorneys that they part-time, they, I mean, they have, they practice in state and federal court. You want clients, you want attorneys that just do federal criminal defense and only in federal criminal court. Then they, you want them to have done cases like yours. Then you want to see if you can speak to a couple, a couple of their clients that have had cases like yours. I mean, you know, they're not, if they're, no one wants to go to prison, but they may have some clients that are willing to talk to you. After that, maybe they'll let you see, you want to see several sentencing memorandums. They're, they will tell you, well, there's HIPAA that you have to worry about. They're right. But if it's a PDF document, they can be redacted. And if it's not a PDF, then take black magic marker. But you just want to make sure that they look different because if they all look the same, next, you want to see another attorney. And then lastly, once you all get along and the financing is okay, or the financial part's okay, you want to make sure that when they ask you to do something, please do what they ask you to do um, because you're paying them for their expertise. And you want to hold them, you want to hold each other accountable so that if that you want to make sure that if you're going to ask them for to do something or to respect your wishes, that they'll at least take it under advisement. They're going to give you a long list of documents that you're going to have to prepare or get copies of before your pre-sentence interview to be able to be given to your um, probation officer. And so that's going to be biographical background and identification background information from you personally. And it'll be copies of financial, medical, so, you know, personal. But you're also going to need to put together your narrative and your release plan because you want all of this to be part of your pre-sentence report and you want it to be presented together with your all of your copies of everything to your pre-sent to your uh probation officer and this is a this is a big deal you are let me see if i have this outlined a little more detail here or i don't want to repeat myself more than 20 times okay so you want to have from your narrative it's going to be your story right now. The Department of Justice has released their narrative of you through your indictment. So what is the narrative? Tesla has their brand. It's their, the brand of their car. It's their That's their narrative. It's their story of their car. Nike's narrative of their shoes is their story of their product, of their, of their sneakers, is their brand. Right now, your brand is your indictment. It's probably not all that flattering. So you need to take time. I mean, it's going to take every day of two, three months to start with a story from you know, going through, it's your autobiography of everything you've done from childhood till now, till today. Um, you know, what you've been through, you know, you were brought up in, in a, you know, loving home, in a poverty home, in a, you went to school, you went to high school, you went to college, or, you know, you were home where the parents fought, or was it a loving home? Was it well-to-do? Was it poor? Were the parents at home all the time? Or was it parents in, or were they in jail? Was it a drug home where, and you need to go through, it's going to be hard, uh, but you need to go through in detail every aspect of your life and when it, and what brought you, what motivated you, you to step by step, you know, what did you do in college? Did you work your way through college? Did you go to college? And then what caused you to do what you did that we, when you were, you know, where are you a government employee? Were you in, did you, were you in business? Did you start your business? Did you ever go bankrupt? Did you not go bankrupt? Did you, you know, for me, it was, I was in practice. Um, then I went ahead and went to start a surgery center. What happened? Why did, you know, I took the, took the easy way out when I, you know, I started correctly building a surgery center, but then I started billing for the surgery center fees before I actually got the certification because when you're done, it will be very cathartic for you. There's no guarantee that it's going to help, but it will humanize you to your probation officer, to your attorney and to the judge, and ultimately to the case manager in the BOP and as long as you're honest and it, the distilled version will, through humanizing you to the court, can do nothing but, but help you. But if you're dishonest, then don't write anything because it can only hurt you. Your release plan, it's the same thing. It's a variation on the narrative. But, you know, like the narrative, you accept responsibility. You have remorse for what you've done. You understand that you have caused the victim's pain, you know, pain and that, you know, you, that you owe it to the victims first 
community second, the court third, family fourth, and yourself last, to take the time while you're in prison through the programs that are available and change your way so that you don't want to come back to this courtroom again either. And this is your allocution, which is your conversation with the judge. And we've covered now the release plan. <clears throat> Life lessons. Admiral McRaven, this is the admiral that led the attack on bin Laden. But it's a very good, short, 15-minute YouTube. And I recommend it highly. I, I realize that while life is crashing around all of us, there's no bullets. And so he gives a a very clear eyed from a different perspective on how to change your future. So while you're doing all this work, your attorney is also working. And so all of this is not really meant for me to tell the, telling the attorney what to do. It's mostly for me showing you what your attorneys are doing. And so what the attorney is doing while you're after the guilty verdict, he and the attorney, he, she is giving you, you know, what you need to begin to put together as far as getting copies of, you need to understand that what is the final dictation deadline date that the probation officer, probation officer has where they have to complete the, the official pre-sentence report. When is that due date? Because that is the date that, well, that's the date they have to have their information into their supervisor. That gives your attorney a, a kind of a timeline by which they have to have all their information done. They also need to learn about the judge's likes and dislikes. That's important. And, you know, and if they have trouble finding that, then they know that they're, you know, they can speak to a local federal defender. Um, but, you know, they don't want to do anything if they're not familiar with that local judge to offend them. If you have a, if there's a, if there's a current treating uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, if there is a, an important medical or medication issue, then that particular physician, it is strongly recommended that they appear at the sentencing hearing, along with having a written um, affidavit, if you will, uh, but it, judges like to like to ask questions, and while they like that, while it's having an expert witness is there is good too. They know that judges know that these are physicians for hire, but they want to have the actual treating physician there too, and because they're going to ask these doc these doctors questions. If it is, if this is a critical of critical nature, the I should have the BOP does not take orders from the from the judge. Uh, you need to have your attorney. Let's see here. This could be. No, that's not it. I will try and remember to come back to that. But they need to have. Um, you need to have your attorney speak to the BOP attorney um, or have the BOP attorney appear in court also. And I will attempt to find that for you before I close this out. If you're having trouble finding an expert, ask the prosecutor who they recommend. This could pay dividends for your attorney on many levels because. If they're willing to give you the recommend their experts, then it's good to have them for your attorney to have that in their pockets. Character letters. Character letters are important, very important. First, these are letters about character, not about anything else. You don't want a letter from someone saying that um, that this is how you should, uh, telling a judge how to sentence you. Second, the character letter, is if you have a character letter about someone who is willing to rehire you after you are released from prison because of your 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 character and your skill set, then that's you know a class A, a great letter, and you should be included. 